If a password manager is compromised, is it safe to continue using them? Stay tuned as we talk about LastPass and if you should stop using them. Welcome to the show. I'm Nathan Cheatham, and this is The First Byte, your guide to navigating IT, web, and marketing topics. I'm joined with my co-host, Eric Bierendorf, and this episode is talking about LastPass data breach. What's going on, Eric? What's going on, Nate? So um, right into it, LastPass was hacked in November, allowing access to millions of users' data. Do you want to pull up the yeah, sure. uh, press release on that? Yeah, we've got something here. And actually, I believe the compromise occurred in August. Okay. So we have here the blog from LastPass. This is Kareem Tuba, the CEO of LastPass. Direct from the source. Yep. Um, and he cites here in August 22 is when, when the um, breach occurred. Exactly. Or at least uh, based on our investigation to date, we have learned an unknown threat actor access cloud storage environment leveraging obtained from the incident we previously disclosed. In, uh, okay, so they previously disclosed an event in August, but um, the latest notice came in December, mm -hmm. and I don't think they have a, I don't think they've since released um, an, any updated information on the event. So just to kind of gotcha. get that date right. Okay, so, well, you know, they've been hacked, they're, they're data breach, but what is LastPass? You know, what are we talking about here? This is an app. It's a password manager. Tell us a little bit about. Yes. Yeah, so app. LastPass is a password manager. Password managers are nothing new. The last password manager or the earliest password manager I can think of is uh, Internet Explorer, I think version five, which dates back to the Windows 98 era, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so password managers in browsers have been common. Okay. And uh, Internet Explorer suffered a compromise or a hack in the early days, which was the first time I remember not trusting a password manager. You know, password manager is, it, is a single point of failure, but it's also, it's, so the idea is, you know, your notebook could be a password manager, your, your, your mind can be a password manager, a notepad on, a note file on your computer can be a password manager. Point is, is, um, it's a place to store your passwords. So password manager giveth and taketh away, right? I use that term a lot. Um, it, it can make managing your passwords easier, but it becomes a single point of failure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and it certainly becomes a big bullseye for hackers, right? So password managers, you know, back in the day on your internet explorer browser were stored locally. Uh, and this whole cloud synchrony business was, it wasn't even heard of fast forward to today, all of our data, I mean, in large part, unless you're some, you know, either you're, if you're not current in the lever in leveraging current technologies or you're a security freak and, and try to keep your data off the internet or the cloud, um, you know, our data is all stored in the cloud now and just synchronized across devices as our de you know various devices access data. So password managers have gone that way as well. So you have the password manager on your browser, on your all of your computers, uh, on your smartphone, iPhone, Android, um, and it allows you you know the data. You you create the passwords locally on the device. It synchronizes up to your account and syn synchronizes across all your accounts for ease, ease of access, but now it's on the cloud, mm -hmm. uh, a, a, which is a target for hackers. So they no longer need to compromise your local computer. They just need to go after the source. Right. And so in August, uh, LastPass discovered that their network was compromised, that data was downloaded. Uh, in December, the news that hit, and in November, I think they even sent an update as well. We learned that password vaults, which is the uh, database of passwords were uh, exfiltrated. That's the mm -hmm. that's the term that's used. Data exfil or data exfiltration, which is taken. Mm -hmm. So our password vaults were taken, um, and I'm a little rusty because it's been, we're a few uh, we're a few months out. But um, what were the other issues? Um, not only was the password managers exfiltrated. 
they had like an open door or something like they um last pass had identified that they hadn't like closed that um that access point right um well they were open for a while mm -hmm. it sounds like and um i'm i'm a little remiss to remember the exact details but not only did they take the not only did they take the password databases but the way that they were encrypted mm -hmm. is such that a large supercomputer can just do a, a brute force against the uh what's called the key the master password of your mm -hmm. password vault so um the system the, the the files are designed in a way that allows brute forcing to occur got it okay and so brute forcing you know have you ever entered a password incorrect three times and then they say now you got to wait five minutes mm -hmm. okay so that is a measure to slow down brute forcing so if you enter an incorrect password three times in the system now every time after three or some amount of times now it gives you a cool down period yep. and oftentimes that cool down period continues to widen mm -hmm. so the first cool down period may be a minute the next one might be five minutes the next one i think apple does this even mm -hmm. you know on your uh, icloud logins and things and then the next one could be 15 minutes you know that is an that is a very effective mechanism to uh, to prevent brute force attacks which a brute force attack laying some foundation here is taking a text file with a billion lines of strings from a line one a line two a a line three a a a line you know what i mean mm -hmm. and creating basically every permutation of the alphanumeric alphabet right sure yep and it's just a simple text file yeah it could be a couple gigabytes large but if you take a supercomputer or even like a reasonable data center these days or some of these crypto machines with like with multi with a bunch of like uh nvidia super you know what i mean like where there's mm -hmm. doing some math like heavy intensive math you know you could brute force into things like incredibly fast so the the files that were exfiltrated don't have a mechanism to prevent brute forcing gotcha so that's a problem from just their infrastructure and like how they created their app essentially it's a technology limitation yeah yeah and uh, one of the things we talk about are like you know some of the competitors to LastPass, and i think it was one password the the company or i don't know if it's the name of their company or just a product it's the number one and then the word password is actually a competing product to LastPass, uh mm -hmm. and they did a blog entry um th th totally throwing LastPass under the bus saying like our technology inherently is designed that if the if your password file does get exfiltrated it mm -hmm. has a mechanism mechanism in there that that impedes the brute force mm -hmm. attack you know Gotcha. so that's why um it's it was it was doubly bad that they hacked LastPass's systems and servers it was triply bad that we find that the technology doesn't even defend against a brute like it is the it is the 101 of mm -hmm. hacking right brute forcing is like the first way you you right. learn how to hack just you're hacking into your parents account and you're just testing all the passwords that you think that they would use my birthday your birthday mm -hmm. my sister's birthday you know what i mean um so you would think that a password manager company would at least be prepared that okay what how can we engineer this so that in the event of an exfil of data mm -hmm. can we prevent them from brute forcing the, the data and apparently apparently it doesn't look like that's the case got it so this begs the question because uh at evernet we use LastPass and we have recommended them to our clients in the past what was the reasoning you know obviously before this breach was announced like why did we use them why are they the in our mind i guess the top of the line for last uh for password management and uh, has that changed really good question <clears throat> in the software world the bigger the vendor typically the safer for for a business use case the bigger the software company typically the safer the investment is in using that that vendor's technology for business use mm -hmm. what does that mean that means the software is supported there's a support line there's a support channel the software is in the terms of software is the software supported that even means like are they fix are they finding bugs contemporaneously like currently and mm -hmm. patching them contemporaneously so when problems are found are they actively supporting their software right. 
I remember back in the '90s during when we we're always downloading. Well, when the remember when the share di shareware discs were coming out mm -hmm. and PC Mag and stuff like that, and you'd have like it was a big thing if you were an in independent software developer to get your your sh your demo on one of those discs, right? But like you didn't then make it was maybe a really cool utility or something. But then like if you failed at making a business out of that then the software dies on the vine and anybody who may have implemented or you know built any functionality around their business around a piece of software that is now dying on the vine and no longer supported and no longer evolving with the business you know the business the business imperative is spending money to make money using these tools and things right so a lot of words to say typically a the larger the software vendor the safer the bet is to use the software for a business use case Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So in that context, LastPass is a major software vendor. It's a significant player, if not one of the largest. And I can't speak whether the largest in um, revenue or they're the largest in user base. Um, I would bet both compared okay. to the major um, competitors. So now the, 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 the nature of their software is to provide a security service. And that is now even more relevant. You know, mm -hmm. who do you trust your money to? Uh, you know, some people do put their money in a single branch local, um, uh, what are they called? The, they're not banks, but they're- Credit unions. Credit unions, yeah. right? That credit, I mean, yes, your money's insured FDIC, if you, but if, you know, if you have $150,000, where would you put that money? Would you put it in a single branch uh, credit union or would you put it in Bank of America where- mm -hmm. The likelihood of them absconding with your money uh, <laughs> is lower, you know, or just folding and saying, sorry, we mismanaged our money, your money, and we just can't help you, you know? So anyways, it, it, it you know, it doesn't have to be that dramatic, but let's, yeah. you know, when it comes to password managers, you, you know, the general thought is, you know, you may want to use a product that is backed by money. And, you know, don't forget, LastPass has a fiscal imperative mm -hmm. to not get hacked. And I'm sure that they took a significant fiscal loss, in, you know, and a, and a hit to their brand here. So now, what do you think they're doing? Well, I mean, yeah, it, it, you get um, breach like this, you have to go back through and do a full security audit. You have to fix the vulnerabilities. They've got the millions that they're that they are dispatching to this problem. Mm -hmm. Now the other thing is if you're using a smaller player and there's a couple of them and one pass might be one password might be that um, do you trust the smaller business to make to to make the appropriate disclosures in the event that they were compromised? Do you trust the smaller vendor from having the dollars to even invest in you know a, a forensic uh, uh, audit and analysis of a hack is expensive? Yeah, it's very expensive. So do you trust a smaller vendor to have the money or the will to do the appropriate investigations and, and, and make the appropriate disclosures? Right. And not just sweep it under the rug and go, eh, yeah, sorry. That, that happens. Right. That happens. We see our government failing to make disclosures all the time. We see institutions, Wells Fargo, um, acting inappropriate all the time. So large and small, public or private there's there there is no men in black sitting on every every ceo's shoulder making sure that everybody's doing what they need to be doing mm -hmm. you know but what i what i believe is the larger vendors have a at minimum a fiscal imperative to act in the best interest of their clients because people will vote with their dollars mm -hmm. so that if i can presume what your next question is do we abandon lastpass um you know, Microsoft, Apple, Android, every single week release a patch th that closes some imminent vulnerability mm -hmm. in those respective products every single day. I mean, every single week, week in, week out. It's, in, it's just never ending, right? Software is inherently vulnerable to compromise. But we continue to put all our eggs in these baskets leverage these tools with our money with our businesses and we expect that these companies continue to abide by this fiscal imperative that i keep mentioning 
uh, and the social contract to just do everything that they reasonably can do to play this cat, stupid cat and mouse game with hackers. If, if there's a discovery of a vulnerability is discovered, close it as fast as possible, make the necessary disclosures so everybody knows what their, um, their, their uh, risk profile is, you know? And that's the nature of this space. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So do we abandon LastPass? Uh, today, I, I don't think so. Okay. Today, I don't think so. I think it's not the first password manager we've heard get hacked. Um, it's not the last one. Oh, my, my screen just turned off. Sorry about that. It's not the first password manager we've, we've, we've learned. Uh, Touch ID doesn't ever. There we go. It's not the first password manager to get hacked. It's not the last password manager to hack. It's not the last time LastPass is going to get hacked. Mm-hmm. So, so then what do we do? Do we stop using the tool? Do we stop using a password manager because it's a single point of failure? You know, again, I use the term, it giveth and taketh away. The internet is the same way. Mm -hmm. These are tools. Tools are capital. Capital is the ability to do more with less, right? So you have to weigh what tools and what exposure and what your, um, your, it's called risk tolerance, what your risk tolerance is. The password managers bring Im- immense capital and security to organizations. You can have your bookkeeper or your accounting office have access to your company's bank account mm-hmm. or bank website. They can log into the bank's website and manage that account for you and your business. But the corporate password manager can let them use the credential to get into your bank account without even seeing the password. Right. Okay, so the, the corporate password manager can let the IT administrator do an audit on the health of the passwords that everybody's using and entering. So we can't see what the passwords are, but we can see if a user is reusing passwords. Right. Sound familiar? <laughs> Very much so. When you started with us, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I actually had this conversation with you are not meeting Evernet's criteria for secure password uh, uh, use. Right, right, and I gave you the hard line. I said, "Clean it up," or I'm ter- I'm disconnecting you from our from our network. And you did. You cleaned mm-hmm. it up. Yeah, um, I see that all the time. The non technical resources that start with us. It's it's and this is why hacking works because people still to this day use the same password for more than one service. People still to this day add the number one or some identifier to to their main password for every respective website. Mm-hmm. It still happens, and that's why that's why the the land the security landscape is so easy for hackers. Right, you know, you compromise Home Depot. I keep using them as an example. 2015 uh, had their website hacked. Now you'd think as ha- the username and passwords for people accessing Home Depot's website is innocuous, no big deal. Who cares, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it's a big deal when everybody uses the same damn password to for every single account that they use. So now 90% of pe- the username and passwords that were, that were siphoned off of Home Depot's seemingly who cares website is now accessing everybody's Facebook accounts, everybody's bank accounts. And this database just goes right to the dark web. Yep. And, it's, and, and the, the, the amount of targets are just pl- plentiful. Well, and that goes into, a, um, is that the new normal of like data breaches with Ev- like everything like yes um you know i use like a, a identity monitoring app and mm-hmm. they now have integrated another uh area of the app where it just shows like what data breaches do you come up in yeah. you know so is it google is it apple is it you know something uh, like amazon yep. or you know in fact LastPass has a, a dark web monitoring service built into it so it actually uh, our you know LastPass corporate will even tell our users mm-hmm. if your password has been a, a part of a compromise right so then you can go in and change it and yeah you know but here's the reality you asked the, your initial question like is this just a, something we have to accept short answer yes mm-hmm. short answer is yes so what is the solution? Do we go, are, are you leading me there or am I leading yeah. you there? So what is, what is the solution? I still recommend a corporate password manager because you can leverage the benefits. I, IT can see if your users are maintaining bad, uh, unhealthy uh, and insecure password techniques, password management techniques, i.e. are they reusing passwords? Are they using insecure passwords? 
um, you can leverage the benefit of um, giving access to a credential to a staffer without presenting the password to them. Mm -hmm. So they can they they have the they have the password manager in their browser, and then when they get to the login page, they can stuff the credential in there without actually seeing what the password is. Right, and this is a a great use because we at, at Evernet utilize outside resources where we want them to see password sharing. Yep. Yeah, we can. I can create folders that can share to them. Yep. They can't see the password, but they can get access to websites that I need them to yep. be able to get into and, and different accounts. Yeah, I mean, ideally every vent, every website that you access has a robust user management control that mm -hmm. you would add a subcontractor to the bank's website or the this website or that website. But the problem is a user management is a challenge that is that has to be solved by every single website. Mm -hmm. Now you have single sign-on technologies that like if you ever went to a website and it says sign on with your Facebook, sign on mm -hmm. with your LinkedIn, sign on with your Google, that is a what's called single sign-on and it, in, it purports to make it easier for future sign-ins, but the website still has to build its own native user control system. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, when you're trying to when the when you're trying to build a particular product, that the virtue is this feature. Yep. A lot of this admin stuff doesn't get managed well. Mm -hmm. it, it's like hurry up, get a user database together, so then we can get people into our software and get it using. You know, but they're not building it with security principles first. You know. So, anyways, so password sharing is a functionality of of a password manager. So. The recommend recommendation still is to use a password manager. We're, you know, Evernet is a vendor agnostic IT company. So we have our cadre of standard products that we recommend. So when a client, we recommend to every client, use a corporate password manager. The response to that almost always invariably is, what do you recommend? Yeah. And in a field of many products in many um, product spaces, we have to just choose what our default selection is. And yes, we evaluate things like compromises and functionality and value mm -hmm. and, and administrative costs. And yes, we do come up with a, you know, uh, the, what I believe is the best default recommendation, but we're vendor agnostic. So the recommendation first is use a corporate password manager. If I had a client say, well, I read about this last pass thing, I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. And we have clients dictate to us. Now, some, some of our competitors I see in our uh, some peer forums and groups that I'm in th that a lot of IT companies and MSPs, managed service providers, dictate to their clients. We don't. That's not the culture in our company. Right. We advise. We we will always make the. We will never not say something when we see something, um, and we may alienate ourselves from the client if we we we, we deal with a lot of personalities. You know what I mean. Um, but it doesn't ever stop us from saying like, hey, you need a corporate password manager. And then if, if it's like, okay, what do you recommend? Well, we'd recommend LastPass. Well, I just read about them getting hacked. Yeah, yeah well, all products get hacked all the time and they're always being patched and there's always, a, you know, the fiscal imperative and then we go into that stuff like that. Well, I'm not touching it. Okay, that's fine. What, what product would you like? You know, if they're following our advice, they'd be like, well, what's the next best one? You know, what's yeah. the next leader in the space? And then we'll go through that and we'll help them procure that and, and implement that so um yeah so re still the recommendation is use a corporate password manager if you can for all new clients and uninitiated clients to the security landscape is still last pass mm -hmm. it's still last pass um but we are monitoring it them closely they are on our radar you know yep. before the ransomware days started we were we 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 you know, we've been in business 15 years. I've been doing this for almost 20. Um, antivirus. We would always evaluate. We evaluate all products. Yeah. And um, we, you know, through the court, through the last 15 years, you know, we recommended um, Semantic for a lot of years. And then Semantic we found was like uh, really incompatible with a lot of client server database applications. You'd have a SQL server in the closet hosting a database application. And then on the Windows computers and everybody's office was the application. And we found Semantic did not do well with that. It was always corrupting the connection to the database and it was problematic and they weren't releasing fixes fast enough. And it became, there was an inflection point where we're like, this is not a viable antivirus, even though it was premier 
mm-hmm. even though it was the biggest name uh, in antivirus at the time, it, they weren't keeping up. So uh, we went to the market and AVG was a, a up and comer and they were leveraging new technologies and new managerial um, techniques and things and it, they solved our problem. And then AVG wasn't keeping up. AVG became kind of like this scrappy second run kind of antivirus for a while. Just they weren't meeting that premium standard. So then Trend Micro came out. You, m- you may have heard of Trend Micro. Mm-hmm. So for, for a lot of years, Trend Micro was our default recommended product. And, um, and then tr- ransomware came out. And we started seeing clients getting bagged by ransomware. And we only let that happen for so long before we saw it, we saw the pattern, you know, we have enough clients that we mm-hmm. see trends, you know what I mean? Right. And we can actually collect meaningful analysis of these kind how the effectiveness of these kinds of products. So, um, so we, you know, when ransomware came out, it was a new attack, which we've seen new attacks all the time. We I classified it, identified it. We saw where the weakness was. Okay. Trend micro is not responding fast enough to protect against ransomware attacks. So we went back to the market. Uh, this was somewhere around 2014, maybe. And Bitdefender, another up and comer, okay, um, was uh, was had the technology and the tools and the techniques to defend against ransomware. And then De- Bitdefender has been our default antivirus for the last, I don't know, seven years or so. Not going to be the last. I think now we're moving to EDR and endpoint detection and response software, which is a new type of technology that's going to supplant antivirus, but. What's my point? I just I just went. Well, up it was the just a matter that um, in the past you're giving context where you've moved away from companies. Yes, thank you. So you brought me back. So so last pass is on is on notice. Gotcha. As far as Evernet Consulting is concerned, as far as Evernet's concerned, they are on notice. Mm-hmm. Um, if we don't see them, if we don't see another public disclosure saying saying how they've uh, in, made changes to their checks and balances and their systems and their data centers, certainly if there's another compromise within the next twelve months, it's they've mm-hmm. got they will be they will swiftly be replaced. Gotcha. But just because of the you know um, Microsoft is plagued presently for the last twenty four months. Do you remember? Do you know what Microsoft Exchange is? I'm aware of it. Yes, it's their underlying email technology. Okay, if, you know, uh, we used to have Exchange. I I made a lot of money in supporting Exchange in small businesses, and mm-hmm. um, thankfully we don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> um, but it's their email software. To, uh, it's their email product technology, right? Yeah. Well, for the last 24 months, they've been plagued by zero day vulnerabilities. Which mm-hmm. zero day vulnerabilities is the term to describe like. Um, there are active hackers exploiting this vulnerability, this unpatched vulnerability in, in the software. Yeah. And um, do you stop recommending Exchange? No, it's like the de facto email tool in the Microsoft suite of products. Mm. You know, you right. just, just get the patches going. So you're essentially your user last pass and you've gone through like this breach has happened. What do you do now? Like, what is the recommendation if you are currently using them and con- going to continue using them? Yeah. So this, you know, this is one of the, one of the, um, one of the, uh, what do I want to say? One of the, I don't want to say kudos. What's another word for kudos? Benefits or? Not, not benefit. One of applause, Accolades. Accolades. Sure. Yeah. It's one of the attaboys that um, LastPass is getting because it says right here on this blog post exactly what you should do. Nice. And in short, change every password in, a, in your LastPass vault. Yeah. That's it. Because the vault is in somebody, your, your, a copy of your vault as of the date of their compromise is in somebody else's hands change every password in your vault and i apologize because if you're anything like me you've got hundreds yeah no absolutely and you know if it's a business and all of those that could be very time consuming yeah so okay now you're getting to the point where you're in there you're changing the passwords Mm -hmm. what's the recommendation because i know that evernet has a standard practice for how your your passwords should be set up yeah. How your account access should be set up. Thank you. You're leading me to the, what I just wanted to say. You saw my light, right? Yep. So here's the saving grace. The standard recommendation, the Evernet recommendation, and, and our consultation and recommendation is always industry standard driven. Like we monitor the industry, the security industry, um, the technology industry, 
um, uh, the likes of Microsoft and major vendors, uh, best practice recommendations, which often run in contradiction to to the to each other a lot. So there's a lot of you know we have to apply intellectual thought and experience to kind of read between the lines and make a de- decision, right? Um, to the point where Microsoft even said that a complex password is. Uh, they have a blog post, and I wish I could pull it up quickly, but Microsoft made it made a, a admission or a recommendation that you know in fact. A complex password is no longer needed or recommended anymore. Mm-hmm. Use a long string password that you can remember, like a phrase, a long pass phrase. Yep. Like the the golden retriever jumped over the log in the woods. Like if that's a really long phrase that if you just set for, you know, some particular site and protected that account with multi-factor authentication, Microsoft believes that that's the best way to secure an account rather than using a long complex string or risk reusing the same password. In fact, I think they may have even mentioned that reusing passwords are le- like not a big deal anymore so long as mm-hmm. you are securing your account with multi-factor authentication. Gotcha. Either way, and I, I don't think the security industry at large has a consensus on this. Certainly Evernet is still not recommending using an easy to remember or reused password. We're not at, we're not at that level. Um the saving grace, however, is multi-factor authentication. You must implement multi- multi-factor authentication wherever available. It is the single most important security mechanism today to keep us safe on the internet. The, the unfortunate reality is, as I described how every vendor has to create their own user database, every vendor implements multi-factor authentication unto themselves. There is, there's some framework and standards there, but if you've ever secured more than one account with multi-factor authentication, did the experience look the same when you did it? No, it's almost always different. Almost always different. There's commonalities, Mm -hmm. the QR code, um, secret keys, secret keys. We're going to email you a six digit uh, uh, temporary code and regurgitate that during this securing process. Mm -hmm. There's commonalities, but the experience of doing it is different with every single vendor. That's not even the worst case. Some vendors still don't implement and provide multi-factor authentication to their service. Mm -hmm. What's worse still is I have vendors in cybersecurity that we buy for Mm -hmm. the purposes of reselling and or, or providing a security feature to our clients that still don't force us out of the box to use multi-factor authentication. I won't name any names. If you're watching, you know who you are because hmm. I'm, connect- I'm in contact with a couple CEOs of the, because I, I squeeze my vendors. I, yeah. I, I demand that they, 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 they maintain at minimum best practices and reasonable standards, you know? Right. Um, but still, still, um, uh, vendors not providing multi-factor authentication still to this day um and 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 certainly when a security vendor is not requiring us out of the box to use it is just is just unheard of so there are it companies out there i assure you mm-hmm. that are providing a security service to their clients that their system their their access their ad, high, you know it's a administration is a t, is a hierarchy so the it company has the highest level hierarchy right. And then they create accounts for you and stuff like that and for your business and your users. I guarantee you that there are IT companies providing a security service. And again, I won't mention the name of this, some of these products that are inherently vulnerable yeah. to, to dictionary attacks and whatnot. And the reason being is I talked to one CEO, well, our IT clients, because the software vendors clients are IT companies like Evernet. Mm-hmm. Well, our clients are pushing back on us and saying like, they, we don't, they don't want the annoyance of multi-factor authentication. I know now you're not even a security <laughs> professional, <laughs> right? And you, your response to that. So imagine, yeah. So it's pretty. It's 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 a lively world right now. It's still you know as evolved as we like to think we are. It's there. W- there's we. There's a lot of pain still to have to you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's a dynamic landscape out there. Um, well, so in this case, you know, Evernet, we're doing everything we can for our clients yeah. from a cybersecurity, uh, uh, securing accounts uh, standpoint. So if, you know, you're a business owner, you're watching this, 
and you're now, I don't know, maybe freaked out a little bit about your own passwords, about, you know, maybe what you're doing for password management. And so what does Evernet have that, you know, someone could come and talk to us for like a product, a service that we have to kind of cover all of these things from uh, cybersecurity? You're, you're doing a direct sale right now. I, I, I'm more of the passive. I'm like the worst salesperson in the world, right? <laughs> so um, if, at minimum, we, I, I, I give everybody an hour of my time for free, right? Mm -hmm. We call it a discovery call. If, I, if you're just freaked out by watching this video and, or you're just uncertain or just want to have a more personalized conversation, um, you just go to our website and schedule a discovery call, right? And I give everybody an hour of, of my time for, for free, so to speak. Although we do charge, if I, I started implementing a $500 minimum onboarding fee for all new clients. And yeah, that, that kind of recovers that time. But if you're not gonna, you know, if, we're, if it's not a fit, cause not everybody's a fit, you know, with us, mm -hmm. um, um, you know, there's, it's gratis, you know? So I can offer you an hour of my time to talk about it. So that's the, that's the easy part. Um, from there we can talk about, you know, again, these recommendations and the pro available products. Um, and then if you are a client and you want us to provide products and services, you know, our, our major, our primary product at Evernet is our intellectual product. That mm -hmm. is our, our, that is my mind, your mind, and the the talent in our team. Right. Um, the products and services in a material way. The you know we resell computers. You know we Dell, HP, Lenovo, um, LastPass. We resell LastPass. You know all of the products that we resell are at retail pricing. It's not a major source of revenue. We we just sell these things for the sake of um, for the sake of um, convenience and and you know our, our clients and we do this too with our vendors. Whenever mm -hmm. you can kind of have vendor consolidation, you're getting efficiency in business management. You know, yep. so you can get all your IT needs met through Evernet if you're you know a client of ours. Um, so you know, password managers, the biggie. And I don't know if the, this is kind of the outside is of the scope of this video, and I think we'll probably do another video talking about yep. this, the biggest security awareness training. Mm -hmm. Security awareness training is a product, you know, we now view and realize, and I've realized this for easily the last 10 years, maybe 15 years, maybe since day one, that it's there is no antivirus that's going to keep everybody secure. There's no password manager that's going to keep everybody secure. If the users of these systems are not engaged in their own security, right? So the security landscape says that every agent, every user, every person in a business, even subcontractors to the CEO, to the janitor, to the, to the secretary receptionist, everybody in an organization now is viewed as a security agent of the corporation or the organization, everybody. So if you're a business of one person or a business of a hundred thousand, Every single one of those people are an attack vector uh, for into your organization. So the only way to mitigate your vulnerability there is to get engagement and buy-in from every single one of them to get them to acknowledge that they are a security, a security agent of the business and then provide them the appropriate recurring and regular security awareness training. Once I identified this as a need about 10 years ago, I started providing this as a kind of consultative labor-based product, if you will. Mm -hmm. So I would send an email every month to all of our clients and say like, do you want a security awareness training session? Which would basically be, it was me driving to the, to the client's office, um, waiting in the conference room for as many of their person, people that they can spare mm -hmm. for an hour of business and send them to the conference room. The receptionist was never there. The janitor was never there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Any subcontractors that they had were never there. The, the, the owner, the boss, CEO was never there. Um, half the people left during half the presentation. The other half fell asleep during the presentation. Point is, is it wasn't uniformly administered. It wasn't measured. Mm -hmm. So um, sometime in the mid-teens, um, this product space has come up called, well, the overall technology is called a learning management system, 
which is basically um, if you've ever taken an online course with at college or anything, they are, are you're doing that in a learning management system. Yep. Um, they there are a lot of products now LMSs out there that um, when we use one for um, we we track training. So every time mm -hmm. we, we you know we have a a workflow or something, we we record it literally mm -hmm. and we make it we make a training video out of it. But there are bespoke security awareness training LMSs out there that you can buy and subscribe to that basically will uniformly dispatch trainings on some regular occurrence to all of the persons in the organization and measure their participation and their assessment. And, it's in, and it basically amounts to a weekly email or monthly email, however your, your team, your organization decides the frequency. I always recommend a weekly micro, uh, micro training. It usually amounts to about a four minute video, a, a video asset um, on some security theme. And then I usually like a four question assessment, which basically says like, do you have a pulse? And did, did you watch this content, yeah. you know? And it's not meant to trick or scare, or you know, if you're not good with testing and you know, whatever, whatever. It's not meant to do any of that. It's just says like, did you watch this thing? And can mm -hmm. you regurgitate the basic theme in this thing? And then it, you, the participation of the learn the, the learner gets recorded back to the platform, and then the administrator of the LMS can see who's who's receiving their training, how they're uh, performing and participating, and then that is real. That is a real management data point that that now you know like well the ceo had just won't take any training the ceo is now a imminent attack vector right right the secretary won't take the training she is an imminent attack vector you know mm -hmm. and so security awareness training is is really a big theme it's it's as big as antivirus if not bigger Gotcha. Well, that will have to be another episode that we get into. So if, you know, we sufficiently scared you I yeah. guess, in the dangers of the online world uh, through this video, please make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Definitely. Uh, the Evernet YouTube channel. Um, and make sure you're catching the first bite every week when we release this. Yeah, we're going to be releasing the first. This the show is titled The First Bite. We like it for now. Um, hopefully, we'll be a first source of content for you guys. Um, we're on social. Follow any of our socials. We're, we are clever enough that um, our social tag is Evernet Co. Evernet Co. Um, on, I think, every major platform. And even our domain, evernetco.com. If you want to speak directly to yep. Eric... Um, you're always available and you can go through the website and schedule a discovery call to have a conversation. And if you're an existing client, email helpdesk at evernetco.com and say, I want to talk to Eric about X or, or Doug uh, or any of our, our team, team members. Um, if you're not an existing client and want to talk about any of this, go to our website, schedule a discovery call. Absolutely. Well, see you next week. Thanks, Nate.